Hello, you guys. I'm going to wait for a few people to get on here. I wanted to share something with you guys that God has been dealing with me about ever since Monday morning. Um, I just want her to get this over with. I really don't want to wait for anyone to come on here because <laughs> I don't like being on here. So, um, I don't like being on here, but, uh, I really feel the need to share this dream that I had Monday morning and the Holy Spirit has been just stirring me up ever since Monday morning. And I have to get this dream off me and I have to let y'all know about this dream and what God is saying. So I had this dream Monday morning about 3 a.m. And, um, the dream was somebody died in the dream. So I, it was like, I knew someone and the person died. And um, in the dream, they was telling me, hey, man, Dominic, I did this for God. I did this for God. I I told people about God. I did all of these works. Like, uh, you know, I was just, I just did this for the poor. And he was explaining to me everything that he did for God while he was on this earth. And as he's explaining this things, these things to me, he ends up like kind of disappearing. And I dropped down to my knees and there was a group of young people with me and I was crying. It was like, uh oh, it seems like it's getting to Dominique. And she she realizes that he's not here. And I said, yeah, he's not here. And I wish that I was able to get to know him and everything like this before he died. And so next, you know, as we're talking, the boy pops up again in the dream. He pops up again and he was like, let me let you say, I want to let y'all know why I really died and what really happened to me. And so as he's beginning to explain to us how he died in the dream, I get pulled away and I get pulled down the street and I get drawn away from them and I get pulled down the street and they're like, there's like 15 men and they all kind of look kind of like Gothic. They had like the big, huge uh, gauges in their ears and they had like black stuff on. And I got drawn back down to the end of the line and there was a guy and he had a big gauge in his ears and everything too. And he was like, hey, do you know where this person is? The boy that died in the dream. He said, Dominic, do you know where he is? I'm like, yeah, I know where he is. I can take you to him. You know, it was like nonchalant. You know, so I'm like, yeah, of course, let me take you to him. So I bring the man to the boy that was telling us how he died and stuff like this. And as soon as the boy saw, um, saw the man, he recognized him. And he was like, I'm not going with you. And the man said, yes, you are. Come on, you're coming with me. And Bo was like, no, I don't want to go back. No, I'm not coming with you. And the man said, yes, you are. And the man came behind him and grabbed the man. He grabbed the, the boy that was telling us how he died. He grabbed the man. He wrapped his hands around him like this, like from the back. So he had a good hold on him. And he was saying, you're coming with me. And he pulled him. And he was screaming at us. He was like, y'all help me. Help me. I don't want to go back. Y'all, please, please, please help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. And he was so scared in the dream. And he was like, y'all help me, please. I don't want to go back. Y'all help me. Help me. Help me. So we was like, we was like, okay, we got to do something. And one of the boys ended up reaching out to him and then grabbing the front of him ended up grabbing his arms. So if you guys can picture this, someone is grabbing him from the back. And then we are all together trying to grab him from the front. So it's like a huge tug back and forth that is going on. He was like, yo, please, 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 I don't want to go back. And in the dream, I'm realizing when he's saying, I don't want to go back, he's talking about, I don't want to go back to hell. And I'm realizing that that's what he's saying. He was like, I don't want to go back. Please, y'all, please help me, help me, help me, please, 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 please. And if y'all should have saw the look on this boy's face, you can tell that he was being tormented in hell. His face and the way he was screaming along, you could tell that he was being tormented. He experienced it and he didn't want to go back. So in the dream, like faith just stirred up in me. And I was like, listen, I believe that God can raise you from the dead. I said, listen, listen. I said, say this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. And when he was about to say it, it seemed like he ended up like slowly, like losing life. And I was like, listen, listen, repeat after me. Say this, say this. And he ended up slowly losing life. And then the same man that had, that had him from the back wrapped around entered into his body 
and his face got distorted. It was like he was like, ah, like his face kind of, y'all know you ever seen like them scary movies like The Conjuring or something like that. And when like them spirits come into people's body, their face starts to get distorted. His face, his mouth stretched out so scary and weird and his eyes got big and then he got pulled back into hell and that was the end of the dream y'all when i mean that dream scared the crap out of me the way this boy was screaming for us to help him the way his face was distorted and it freaked me out after that that I, and I did not know that entire time that man was a demon that was coming to take him back to hell y'all when I mean that dream that dream changed changed my life literally and I was asking God and I was crying I said I don't understand why did you show me this I don't want to see this and the Lord was saying Dominique it's time to get back to winning souls he said hell is real he said, and sometime, even me, he even corrected me. He said, Dominic, even you and even my people, we get so caught up with this natural realm. We get so caught up with what we can see, what we can touch to the point that at the end of the day, if you was to close your eyes right now, you would lift up your eyes in heaven or in hell. And the Lord was like, you, we, they get, people can get so caught up in this natural realm and what they can see now every day. And the Lord brought different things back to me. Uh, people calling me and was like, man, Dominic, I'm having marital issues. Man, this is going on in my life. Man, this is going on in my finances. And the Lord said, Dominic, the Lord, the enemy will use these things as distractions. The enemy will use these different things as distractions to distract us from the eternal world. At the end of the day, yeah, your stuff, crazy things may be going on in your marriage. Yeah, crazy things may be going on in your job. Yeah, crazy things may be going on in your schooling and your finances. But that's not something we need to be concerned and worried about every day. What we need to be concerned about at the end of the day, if I was to die right now, where would I spend eternity at? Whatever you spend eternity, if you could spend eternity in hell, you're going to be tormented for the rest of your life. Or if you spend eternity in heaven, you're just going to be with God. And that dream literally scared the crap out of me. I said, you know what? It got to the point that I said, I don't care. I don't care how young I am. I don't care who doesn't want to hear it. I don't care who was, who wants to hear it. I'm going to tell people about God because that dream scared the crap out of me. That day I got up, I got up that day and I went to the mall and I won, I won 10 souls to Christ. I was telling people about God. I was telling people, let go of hurt. Let go of unforgiveness. God wants to free you. God wants you to come back to him. It was, I was ministering to a girl yesterday in Northwoods Mall. I said, listen, I said, there was a place in God that you once was. I said, you loved him. You searched for him. You was in church. I said, and you left that place. I said, God is saying to go back to that place. God was giving me words to minister to people. And I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all, we get so distracted with this natural realm. We get so distracted with this natural realm and hell is real. That thing scared me so bad y'all to the point that when I got up I gave my life to God all over again that dream scared me so bad that I felt that that thing could have took me next that's how real it was it took me a minute to get to get back in this real world that's how that's how bad it terrified me and after that dream the Lord was like Dominic you know what I want you to go on my word he said because Winning souls is the first thing that I did. I said, Lord, what do you mean? And he took me, he, he took me when, um, if you guys, you guys read the word, y'all got to start getting your word. If you read the word after the Holy Spirit fell upon Jesus, he was tempted. He, he, he was, he went on a 40 day fast in the wilderness. He was tempted when he came out of the wilderness. The first thing that came out of his mouth, he said, repent for the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. The first thing he did was preach repentance. The first thing he did was evangelize. The first thing he was concerned about was souls. That was the first thing that came out of his mouth. That was the first thing that he was concerned about was souls. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell upon the disciples, after the Holy Ghost, after the Holy Ghost fell, fell upon the disciples, the first thing they did was preach repentance. They said, come, they said, they said, they said, receive this Jesus in your heart, the same Jesus you crucified. They said, receive him into your heart and he will fill you with the Holy Spirit and 3000 people. I don't think y'all understand this. 3,000 people in one day got converted. 3,000 people's souls were saved. After they preached repentance. 
They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they preached repentance. They did not care. They, they had an encounter with God that changed their lives. They had an encounter with God that changed their life and they preached repentance. Then the Holy Spirit confirmed this with me. He said, Dominique, he said, after I died on the cross, I came and I visited, he said, I came and I visited the, um, the disciples a few times. And if you guys remember, he spoke to Peter. He said, Peter, y'all got to read this. He said, this is John 21, 15 through 17. He said, Peter, do you love me? Peter was like, yeah. He said, feed my sheep. He asked Peter this three times. He said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, you know, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter said again, he said again, Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? And the word says that Peter got grieved. Like he got sad and like, he was like, man, you know, I love you. Feed my sheep. I tell you on today, feed my sheep means win souls. Catch my fish. Win souls. Go after people. Go after people. I don't know who's online. Corey, if you love God. If you really love God, feed his sheep. Asia, if you love God, if you really love God like you say you do, feed his sheep. Be concerned with he what is with what he's concerned with. That's the thing. We concerned with the wrong thing. If you go and tell the literally after today, anybody who's watching this, I want to let you know you have no excuse to win souls after today. After today, you have no excuse to go into Walmart and before you leave out of Walmart, you have no excuse to tell people about Christ, about Christ. You have no excuse to tell people what you got delivered from, what he freed you from. You have no excuse when you go into the gas station and you pumping gas in your car. You have no excuse after today. The blood is not on your hands because now you know. You cannot say that you do not know after today. I want to let y'all know this is a setup from the Holy Ghost. This is a setup from the Holy Ghost. After today, you have a work that needs to be done. There is a work that needs to be done. And I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what, I don't, I don't care. Listen, it's time for us to preach repentance. It's time for us to preach the cross. It's time for us, we putting on these little services and people not getting set free and delivered. Their souls are not being pulled out of hell. I don't care what you're doing. This boy in this dream said, Dominic, I did this for God. This boy did works. Works mean nothing. And Lord told me this. Lord said, Dominique, works mean nothing to me. You can go to these homeless shelters. You can give back. You can do all these other things. But guess what? Them works mean nothing to God. It's about pulling people's soul out of hell. That is what it's about. And the Lord told me something else. He said, Dominique, he said, Christianity and loving me. He said, you cannot be selfish. He said, if you want to be selfish, and you want to be like, I don't know how I'm going to say it. I don't know if somebody's going to judge me. The Lord said, if you want to be selfish and you and, and you don't want to do what I want you to do, you in the wrong religion, buddy. You in the wrong relationship. You serving the wrong God. I'm going to need you to go and find another religion because God is not selfish. The first thing he came out and preached was repentance. The, first, the, the last thing he told his disciples said, if you love me, feed my sheep. That's the first, that, that is the basics of Christianity. The basis of Christianity is evangelizing. You don't have to be evangelist. You don't got to be a preacher to tell people about Christ. The woman at the well, when Jesus prophesied the woman at the well and she was changed, the first thing the woman at the well did, she went and said, y'all come see about a man that told me everything about my life. That's the first thing she did was evangelize. The man that got set free from legions of demons, he went back into the city and it says that he told them what he showed, even showed them. And show them his, show them himself. I was once bound and now I'm free. You do not have to be a minister to tell people about Christ. What I mean, y'all, that dream, that dream woke me up. That dream woke me up, y'all. And I'm trying to tell you, it's time to wake up. It's time to focus on the real thing. We can be so distracted by what we can see, what we can touch and everything like that. But hell is real. We need to get concerned with the eternal world. We need to get concerned with eternity. At the end of the day, Dominique, when you close your eyes, where are you going to go at? All this unforgiveness, anything that anybody has done to us, man, all that, mean, all that means nothing, man. Let all that stuff go. We be concerned with the wrong thing, man. We concerned with the wrong thing. Every day you get up, man, I, my bills, man, man, my husband getting on my, man, you concerned with the wrong thing, buddy. You concerned with the wrong thing. Why do you think when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, 
He wasn't upset that they crucified him. Why wasn't he upset? He's the Lord for they know not what they're doing. He was focused on souls. He was focused on our freedom. He wasn't focused that they were, they were spitting on him. He wasn't focused on that, you guys. He wasn't focused that I'm on this cross. They crucified me. They're spitting on me. They're doing this. They're telling me I'm not the son of God. He wasn't focused on that. He was focused on at the end of the day, y'all, I'm not worrying about what's going on naturally. I know that in the spirit realm, I know that eternity is about to be affected. I know that in the spirit realm, somebody, souls, thousands, thousands of years, hundreds of year, years away from here are going to be affected. They're going to be saved. And that's the mindset we need to have. Anybody naturally, if they were on a cross and got per persecuted and they were on a cross like that, naturally we would lose our mind and we would get so upset, but he did it because his mind was on souls. That's what our mind needs to be on. It's souls. When your mind is on souls, it don't matter what happens. When your mind is on souls, it doesn't matter what's going on in your relationship, in your marriage, in your finances, in your schooling. When your mind is on souls, all of that stuff is out of the door because you are concerned with what heaven is concerned with. We live our daily lives concerned with the wrong thing and that's what the enemy wants. On today, I challenge y'all. Y'all have no excuse. I'm so sorry. This is a setup from the Holy Ghost. Whoever is looking, I don't listen. Whoever is looking, this is a setup from the Holy Ghost. You have no excuse now to win a soul. You have no excuse now. You know the truth. You have now the blood is on your hands, just like the blood is on my hands. I was so serious. I won 10 souls to Christ yesterday. This is literally, it's like a, I, I, it's like a all, all for nothing. It's like I'm all in, all in. After that dream, I can do nothing else but do what God wants me to do. I, I can't do nothing else but do what God has called me to do. God literally had to show me that dream. Show me, show me that this boy was doing what God wanted him to do. God had to show me this dream and show me that this boy said, I did this for God. I did that for God. So and so and so and so. But at the end of the day, that boy got drugged right back. That boy got drunk to hell. And it was too late. Those who are looking is not too late. Those who are looking is not too late for you to give your life back to God. Those who are looking, it is not too late. It's too late for that boy. It's too late for that boy. And I want to let you know, that dream I had, that's a real boy that I know. That's a real boy that I know who died. And I know that he is in hell right now getting tormented. So that thing hit home. That thing hit home with me. It hit home with me. Yes, it did. It hit home with me. Because I knew this boy. I knew that he did what God wanted him to do. And he died. And now this boy is in hell getting tormented. These works, it's not going to get you in the kingdom. It's your soul right now. Some of us, we so caught up on our careers. We so caught up on nobody supporting us. Stop thinking about yourself for a change. Think about souls. Think about souls. I heard a story of a man said, that God was telling him, I want y'all to win souls. I want y'all to win souls. I want you to win souls. And one day this man had this dream. He had this dream. And he had a dream that he wasn't, that God, um, that a man, that his next door neighbor died, went to hell and wrote him a letter and said, how, how dare you be saved? You knew right from wrong. You were saved. And I died and I went to hell. You were my next door neighbor and you never told me the truth. You are my next door neighbor. And if you would have came and told me about this Jesus that you serve, I would never be in hell. That man said he woke up out of his dream. He went to his next door neighbor, knocked on the door and said, hey, where, where, where's your husband? I have to speak to him. The, the wife answered the wife answered the door and the wife said, my husband died three, three days ago. He said, my husband died three days ago. He had a dream that his next door neighbor wrote him from hell and said, how dare you be a Christian and now I'm in hell suffering and you live next door to me this entire time and you never told me about Christ. This man got up, went to his next door neighbor after he had that dream, knocked on the door. His wife answered. He said, where's your husband? She said, my husband died three days ago. What are we doing? What are we doing? 
evangelize is the is the fundamentals is the basics of our, of our christianity life if you won't be selfish if you won't worry about yourself you won't worry about your career if you worry about your, your